Hi everyone, I'm Paul and welcome to my ICT Concepts video on breaker blocks and how to use them. Breaker blocks are one of the more commonly used PD arrays that ICT teaches, but they're often surrounded by quite a lot of confusion because they're very similar to mitigation blocks and they're often called failed order blocks. So if you're struggling to understand what breaker blocks are and how to use them, then this is the video for you. But before we jump into today's video, there's something you need to know. I work really hard at putting these videos together for you and I know that they provide a lot of value, but you need to understand that these videos aren't free. Now the great news is that you don't need to pay with any money. All you have to do is subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and give it a like. That's it. Let's call this our gentleman's agreement or our ladies understanding. This is our social contract, because I can't be looking over your shoulder, making sure that you're gonna do it, I just have to trust that you will. So I'll keep making high quality videos for you, and all you need to do is keep subscribing and liking the videos, which sounds like a pretty good deal to me. And besides, everyone else is doing it, and so you should too. And lastly, if you'd like to hear more from me and join a community of like-minded traders, then make sure you check out the link in the description where you can subscribe to my free weekly newsletter and to join our Discord. Now that that's out of the way, let's jump into today's video. Today's ICT Concepts video is on breaker blocks. And we'll just go through a quick outline of today's video. So the first section is we'll look at PD arrays and the breaker block. And then we'll go into what actually is a breaker block, followed by what are the concepts behind using breaker blocks. And then finally, we'll finish up with how to use breaker blocks, along with some practical examples from our charts to help consolidate our understanding. So we'll start off today's video with a review of our PD array. Now you'll recall from our PD array or our dealing range that we have our equilibrium level, and we have our premium above equilibrium and our discount below equilibrium. And so above equilibrium, that means we're in our premium market. So we'll be looking to go short in this area. So we'll be looking for bearish setups. And so in this video, that means we're looking at our bearish breaker. Now below equilibrium, that means that we're in a discount market. So we'd be looking at long setups. And therefore in this example, we're gonna be looking at our bullish breaker. So in this next part of the video, we're gonna be going through what is a breaker block and we're gonna be going through both a bearish and a bullish example. So we'll start with our bearish example now. So as always, we're looking at a high time frame point of interest. So in this example, the market is trading higher. We take out that point of interest we then get a pullback, so we create a high here after we've taken out that high time frame point of interest, and then the market pulls back before trading higher again. So you can see we create a higher high with this next push. The market then pulls back below the short term low, which gives us our bearish market structure shift. The market then trades back up and then trades lower again. So you'll notice between these two higher highs, we have this short term low. And so what we're really focusing on is this down close candle in this short term low. And so our breaker block is the last down close candle in the short term low, which is between the two higher highs before our market structure shift. Moving across to our bullish breaker block now, it's obviously pretty much just the opposite of what we're talking about with our bearish setup. So we have our high time frame point of interest and the market is trending down towards that. So we get an initial sweep of that high time frame point of interest, the market pulls back before then dropping lower. So this low is now lower than this one. So we have lower lows, the market then retraces back and trades higher than this short term high before pulling back and trading higher again. So this particular move here, so this push higher, gives us our bullish market structure shift. We trade back into this zone before trading higher. So in this example, our bullish breaker block is the last up close candle in this short term high, which is between the two lower lows and prior to our market structure shift. So now that we understand what a breaker block is, it's important that we understand the concepts behind using breaker blocks so that we can better apply them in our trading. So we're gonna look at both our bearish and our bullish breaker blocks now using that same price action or that same diagram that we used in the previous slides. So again, we have our high time frame point of interest and the market is trading up towards that. So in this push, we take out that high time frame point of interest, the market pulls back before trading higher again and this creates our higher high. The market from that point pulls back 
and we get our bearish market structure shift before price trades back up into this short term low before trading lower. Now what's actually happening is after we take out that high time frame point of interest and the market pulls back, we have traders going long here on that pullback from the high. So they're expecting a continuation of this trend. So as the market trades higher, our buy stops get raided just here and then the market pulls back. So as the market pulls back, we get our bearish market structure shift and these traders who went long here are now trapped in this trade. And so they're obviously wanting to mitigate their losses. They don't wanna take any loss if they can or minimize their losses if they have to. And so what they'll be waiting for is a trade back up into this zone to try and close out their positions. And so you'll note, this is very similar to our mitigation block setup. The only difference in a mitigation block setup is that this high is actually higher than this one. So the subsequent push doesn't actually take out the previous high, it actually is lower. But if we go back to our bearish breaker block, that's why this setup works. So we have our last down close candle in the swing low between the two higher highs prior to the market structure shift. So if we draw that zone out in time, remember we have traders going long here, the market trades higher, the buy stops above this swing high are taken out, and then the market pulls back, we get our bearish market structure shift. So the traders who went long here are now trapped and are looking to get out of those positions. They can see that there's been a bearish market structure shift and they've been wrong footed. So they wanna mitigate their losses. They wanna get out of their positions. So as soon as price comes back into this zone, they're immediately gonna be looking at closing their positions, which helps to drive price even lower. So if we look at our bullish breaker block, it's obviously very similar, just the opposite. So we have our high time frame point of interest and we have the market trading lower towards that. So this first push, we take out that high time frame point of interest, the market pulls back, then we get another push lower, the sell stops above this swing low are taken, we get our lower low and the market pulls back higher, we take out this short term high, which gives us our bullish market structure shift, market pulls back into this zone before taking off again. Now, opposite to what was happening in our bearish example is in this example, as we get the pullback from this swing low, we get traders trying to go short. They're obviously trying to take advantage of this trending market. And then the market pushes lower again. These sell stops get taken, which creates a reaction. The market pulls back and it goes higher. When it takes out this short term high, we get our bullish market structure shift and the traders who went short here now realize they're on the wrong side of the trade and that the market's going higher. And so again, they wanna mitigate their losses by trying to get out. So as the market comes back into this zone, that's where they're gonna start closing out their position. So they're gonna be buying these positions back, which will drive price higher. Again, this is very similar to the mitigation block setup, but in a mitigation block setup, this would be the lower low. So we'd create that initial low when the market pulls back, it would make a higher low rather than a lower low. So going back to our bullish breaker example, the reason why this particular setup works is we have our last up close candle in the swing high between the two lower lows and prior to the bullish market structure shift. So as traders are going short from the pullback from the low, as we raid these sell stops and then the market reverses, taking out this short term high and creating our bullish market structure shift, the traders who initially went short now realize they're on the wrong side of the trade and so they're looking at mitigating those losses. So if we draw out our bullish break across in time, you can see this gives us this zone of interest. So as the traders who went short here start to look at closing out their positions, it's here that they're gonna be looking to mitigate their losses by buying those positions back, which will push price higher. So now that we know what a breaker block is and we understand the concepts behind breaker blocks, the next obvious question is how do we use breaker blocks in our trading? So again, we'll look at that same illustration and we'll apply a trade setup to it. So we're in our bearish breaker block. We've taken out that high time frame point of interest and we can see we have our breaker block. So our breaker block is our last down close candle in the swing low between our two higher highs prior to that market structure shift. So we've drawn out our air of interest. So we've got our pink box, which we've drawn out in time and we're waiting for price 
to trade back up into that zone, which is where we know traders are going to be mitigating their losses who are wrong footed trying to go long on a trend continuation. So one of the easiest ways to trade a breaker block is just to look at the mean threshold. So the mean threshold is effectively just the 50% level on the candle. So if we measure from the top of the candle, so from the high to the low, and we just look at our mean threshold, so that 50% level, we can use that as our limit sell order. And that's where we're going to enter our trade short. Now, in terms of our stop placement, again, there's lots of ways you can do this, and it's going to partly depend on what the price action is. You know, if you're trading as you come back into this zone, you might be able to use the swing high here. There might be some candle formations in this structure here that you could use, but obviously the most easy is just to use the high of the breaker block itself. Now, as always, ICT teaches making sure that we pay the trader. So we wanna look at that low hanging fruit as our first take profit. And so a logical structure is generally gonna be the swing low that actually created the market structure shift as our first take profit. And then we'd look at our final take profit or our terminus at where the origin of that move would be. So somewhere down here in the price action. So if we switch across to our bullish breaker block, it's obviously very similar. So we observe the bullish breaker in our price action, which is gonna be the last up close candle in the swing high between the two lower lows before our bullish market structure shift. So we draw that out in time, so that's what this blue box is here. And we're obviously gonna be waiting for price to come back into that zone. So again, what I've done is just the simplest way is I've used the mean threshold, so the 50% level between the high and the low of the breaker candle, and that's where I'm gonna put my limit buy order. Now again, where I put my stop order is gonna be partly dependent on the price action. The easiest place is gonna be at the low of this candle. It also depends on the time frame you're using. So any of the price structures around here, any swing lows that make sense, you can use as well. And as always, we're always making sure we pay the trader. So we'd be looking for our first take profit. So again, we look at any of the structures that make sense. So you can see in this diagram, we have a swing high here. So that would be a good place to look for our first take profit. And so for our final take profit or our terminus, we'd be looking at where that price move originated from as our final target. So we'll look at some practical examples now to try and bring all these concepts together. So we're looking at our Bitcoin chart. And what you can see is I've drawn my dealing range from this swing low to this swing high. And you can see we've marked out our breaker block here. So you can see that price has taken out the buy side liquidity. We've created this short term high here. The markets pull back. We have our short term low formed here, just where this little uh, chevron is here. The market's traded higher. We've taken out the buy side liquidity. So we now have our higher highs. And so we're looking between those two higher highs for our potential breaker block. You can see that price then trades lower, so we get our bearish market structure shift, and so we now have our confirmed bearish breaker block just here. So you can see I've marked that out with a pink box just there. And so what we're looking for is for price to trade back up into that zone. And so you can see from here, price then trades back up into that zone. So we're just using a simple mean threshold for this particular entry. So you can see I've marked the entry here, so the limit sell order here. You can see the market trades back up into that twice before then falling away. Now in this example, I've just used the stop as the high of that candle. But as I mentioned earlier in the video, you can really use any of the structures in this particular price action that you feel comfortable with. So you could use the high of this candle here, or you could use this swing high here. It's really up to you. And equally, for our limits, you could use other options as well. So you could use the low of the candle, you could use the close of the candle, or again, the mean threshold that I've used in this example. Now in this example on Bitcoin, for our take profits, I'm just looking within the dealing range for places that make sense to exit. So obviously we're going short in a premium part of the market. So you can see we're in a premium here, we're going short. So we're obviously gonna target the other side of the dealing range and we're gonna be looking for bullish dealing arrays that we can use to take profit. So you can see just into the discount part of the array, we have a fair value gap here. And so you can see at the consequent encroachment or the sort of middle of that fair value gap is where I've got my first take profit. So I'm looking 
to pay myself just here. And then for my second take profit or my terminus, if I just wanted to run all the way to that one level, again, I'm looking at my consequent encroachment level in that fair value gap, which is deeper in the discount array. Now, obviously, if I'd held all the way to that second take profit, I'd be getting a risk reward of over 8R. Obviously, if I have a single take profit here and then another one here, that's gonna be a lower risk return, but I'm obviously paying myself to make sure that I make money on the trade. But the flip side of taking a profit here is I make sure that I always pay myself so in case the trade goes the other way, I've still paid the trader. Now in this next example, we're gonna be looking at a bullish breaker on the S&P. So once again, I've drawn out my dealing range and the market's taken out this sell side liquidity as we get this cascade lower. You can see we paint a swing low here, the market pulls back, we get a short term high here where we have this red chevron, and then the market falls again, dropping lower, creating a lower low. So we have our lower lows and we have the starting of our bullish breaker forming. We just need to see our market structure shift. So again, price trades higher. We take out this short term high, so we get our bullish market structure shift. So we now have a confirmed bullish breaker right here. So we have our last up close candle between our two lower lows and prior to our bullish market structure shift. So I've just marked that out with a blue box and drawn that out in time. And then the market trades back into this area. So again, in this example, I've just used the mean threshold. So the 50% level between the high and the low of that candle. And I've used that as my limit buy order. And again, I've used just the low of that candle as my stop. And you can see the market touches that almost exactly before then trading higher. And so with the limit order, there's obviously options around this, just like there is with the bearish breaker. So I could use the high, I could use the close, or the mean threshold as I have in this example. And similarly with the stop. In this example, I've used the low of this candle, but I can use any of the structures in the price action that makes sense. So I potentially might use one of the lows of this candle, or if I was gonna be really conservative, I might use say a swing low like this, but I'd obviously need to probably hang on for a bit of a bigger move in that example, because that would be so far away. Now again, for our take profits, we're gonna be looking at the other side of our dealing range for likely targets. So in this example, I haven't got a PD array that makes sense, which is just outside of equilibrium, so in our premium part of the market, but you can see we have a clear swing high here where I know there's gonna be liquidity residing above this swing high just here. So this is what I've used for my first take profit. And then the second take profit or my terminus, I've used this fair value gap just here, which is obviously deeper into that dealing range. And again, I've looked at the consequent encroachment level, so the 50% level of that fair value gap as my you know, second take profit or my terminus. And so again, in this example, if I just held on for the entire move, so I'd taken my whole trade off at this TP2, I would have got a risk return of over nine. But obviously if I've taken a partial here at this TP1, so I'm making sure that I pay the trader, my overall risk return is gonna be lower. But if the trade does go against me, I've made sure I've paid myself. Thanks for watching my video on breaker blocks and how to use them. I hope you found it helpful and I hope you're able to incorporate breaker blocks into your trading and your analysis. Now don't forget our gentleman's agreement or our ladies understanding I've done my part and now it's time for you to do yours. And lastly, if you'd like to hear more from me and join a community of like-minded traders, then make sure you check out the link in the description where you can sign up to my free weekly newsletter and to join our Discord. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.